Hello all, in this video we will continue with now physiology, properties of reflexes. First one is bell Mezzendi law, which is also known as one-way conduction of impulse. Next one is reaction time, it is the time interval between the application of the stimulus and the response for the stimulus, that is the onset of reflex. Next one is summation, uh, this helps in facilitation of responses during the reflex activity. There are two types, spatial summation and temporal summation, which has been discussed earlier. Now occlusion, it is explained using the uh, flexor reflex. When two nerves are stimulated simultaneously, the tension produced by the muscle is less than the sum of each nerve when it is stimulated separately. Example, consider A in a nerve. Uh, has 9 units of tension and B now has 9 units of tension. When they are stimulated separately, they produce 18 units of tension and when they are stimulated simultaneously together, they can only produce 12 units of tension. This explains the occlusion phenomenon and it is due to the overlapping of nerve fibers, this occlusion happens during distribution. Next one is subliminal fringe. This is exactly opposite to the occlusion phenomenon. Here, that is here, the uh, sum of the tension produced when two nerves stimulated together is more than the sum when each nerve is stimulated separately. This is due to the effect of spatial summation. Next one is recruitment. It means the successive activation of the additional motor units with progressive increase in the force of contraction of the muscle. Example, when an excitatory nerve is stimulated more, there is a gradual increase in the response and it reaches a plateau value it's because there is only limited motor units present, so beyond which there is no response. Recruitment is similar to that of temporal summation. Next one is after discharge means the continuation of responses even after the stimulus is stopped it is because of the center which keeps on releasing the impulses through the interneurons. Next one is rebound phenomenon. Here in this case uh, the reflex activity can be inhibited for some time forcefully but when this inhibition is relieved, the flex activity would become more forceful than it was there before inhibition. Next one is fatigue. When a reflex activity is continuously elicited for a long time, the response is reduced slowly. At one stage, the response does not occur at all even after further stimulation. Now we will see about reciprocal inhibition and reciprocal innovation. Reciprocal inhibition is when a group of muscles are excited, the antagonistic muscles of the same site are inhibited. This is due to reciprocal innovation. That is, consider a flexor flex in the limb, the afferent nerve fibers which if evoke a flexor of flex in a limb have connections with the motor neurons of the flexor muscles and also connects with the motor neurons of the antagonistic muscles that is extensor muscles. So when uh, flexor muscles are excited, it is contracted and the extensor muscles are inhibited through an interneuron. Now we'll see about cross extensor reflex. It is a withdrawal reflex in which the flexors of the withdrawal limb are excited and the extensors are inhibited on the same limb. That is, the flexors are contracted and the extensors are relaxed. The opposite reaction occurs in the in the other limb. This crossed extensor reflex is because of reciprocal inhibition. 